Uh, more Ashley stuff. She can smell that Gary would be good in bed at one point, she says. Uh, Someone's father is very proud right now. So number one, holy fuck. Uh, and two, <laughs> maybe, you know, depending on how much booze he's, he's thrown down, you know, uh, he could be good, but he could be, you know, ramming an earthworm into you. You never know. So... Welcome aboard another brand spanking new episode of another Below Deck podcast, another Below Deck Sailing Yacht podcast. It's episode one, the season premiere of our favorite offshoot of this franchise. We are setting sail aboard Parsnips 3, and we are thrilled to be with a very problematic, bloodthirsty Captain Glenn and the rest of his sea rats. I'm Dylan. Sincere apologies for that long introduction. Saddled up next to one real Nicholas Davis. Ahoy, matey! Pat, producer of the podcast, is over there behind my glasses. Permission to come aboard. Permission granted. <laughs> Permission granted. <laughs> Guys, a new voyage nice. is on the horizon. Uh, it's a big, big season for us. Um, I think this is the first time we've put Sailing Yacht on the free feed for the cheapos. If you are a cheapo, ew, go to patreon.com slash another podcast network. Where we have Love is Blind and the past two seasons. Oh, below deck sailing yet. Delhi, not uh, don't sleep on that uh, down under below deck is coming up in like the next two or three weeks. You will not be getting that. For no, free. you won't. <laughs> no, no you're going to be paying for it's that. It's an impossibility that you'll get that for free. So that's at patreon.com slash another podcast network. Don't be a cheapo. Ooh. So, and if you're not already <laughs> subscribing to your 70th streaming service, it's actually going to cost you $15 <laughs> a month because you will also need Peacock. All right. Yeah. So. We have a big episode tonight. We have a big season. One of the reasons why I say we have a big season, guys, please stop pouring your malt liquor into <laughs> golden goblets. We're watching Love is Blind, dude. All right. So we already pitched it. <laughs> okay. So it's a big season for us because uh, huge announcement. Uh, we have finally somehow snuck through the wall. We are behind enemy lines um and bravo has not thrown us into a kind of pow type camp for this but rather embraced us into their court we I've have always thought, a symbiotic relationship now we're going to be friends with bravo we're going to put down our blades for at least one season of below deck nick i've actually uh always thought they're kind of the height of network television nowadays they put out the best stuff every decision they've ever made has been uh cogent thought out and honestly all fortune 500 companies should take a page out of bravo's book because they're the best company ever and i love their tv shows <laughs> yeah they've never done anything wrong and i cannot be bought not once to watch that last season of real housewives in new york so that means that we will be uh, having a season chock full of guest interviews. Um, we'll try to get everybody on the season. Well, guest interviews. By the, uh, they would think you mean oh, guests on the boat. Excuse me. Crew interviews. No, the actual cast, the actual sea rats that you were witnessing throughout the season will be appearing on this show because Bravo and this network have laid down our sword. So look forward to many interviews with many sea rats, including one tonight. We spoke to. Our mortal enemy, one Gabriel Barragan, uh, the person who, um, you know, taught us so much about the yachting industry the first time she came on and slept through the second time she was supposed to come on. We love her very much. Let's see if we put our, down our swords in an interview coming later. Guys, uh, first episode. PSAs are out of the way, I feel. Yeah. Have we talked about Love is Blind? Just kidding. <laughs> Thoughts enough. How do we feel about the thoughts and the knots, Pat? Go. Oh, it's tough because that uh, intro package of what we're going to see for the season was so fantastic. It was sea rats just sea ratting it up. I think we got a shot of, at a couple orgies. Uh, best looking crew on below deck ever. Ball of snakes type stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, they were on the boat for six hours. They tried filling holes. Right, right, right. It's wonderful. And then we got that drama at the tail end of the episode, and we cover that in the interview with Gabby. Why are you talking like that? It, I don't know. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. It puts... Uh, and your knots? <coughs> 100. 100 knots? Yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. Nick, 
pretty much everything Bravo's ever put out is 100 knots. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but it, even just, that one season with Ebony K. Williams. Just mm-hmm. just to put in perspective, every when I talk about these episodes and I don't give it 100 knots, that's only within the bubble of Bravo, right? Which right. all the stuff they do is 100 knots, right? Uh, but it's like a, a Francis Ford Coppola movies, you know. Uh, yeah, they're all so good. Uh, what an incredible first day of school. I felt like my family took me to Europe or sent me to some sort of boarding school and I didn't get to see my best friends, but I came back and we were so excited to see each other. Right. Honestly, there's going to be drama. There may be ball snakes, although I don't think it's going to get as weird as you think it might get. Right. Uh, I don't think a lot of people fucking each other. I don't, <laughs> I, I, I don't think any, <laughs> I don't think anybody's uh, uh, getting impregnated this season. Well, uh, I don't know about that. But nonetheless, what I loved about this episode was the camaraderie and the sheer joy that Daisy, Colin, and Gary saw when they met each other. And Glenn. He loved them all. They're a big, happy family. It, Glenn and Gary need their own online series in the off season. It would be on bit shoot because there would, <laughs> there would be some content that you'd get deplatformed for. But, uh, but nonetheless, <laughs> 100 knots. Yeah, I'm going to raise a glass and echo the same sentiment that Nick did. Um, it was incredible to see the core four put their rings together <laughs> and fucking set Let's drink. sail. It was Let's incredible. You know, cl- Glenn in, in season one had... Uh, uh, that uh, that weird couple of um, uh, pageant, pageant and, and Sierra. Sierra, you know they're they're no, you know they're fine people, but they're no Gary, they're no Colin, you know, no, no. Uh, you know Gary they're, they're fucks. No. <laughs> All right, smokers cough. Okay, inappropriate comments <laughs> to coworkers. <laughs> right, <laughs> being a really nice guy in ponytail. Right, fucking whores. Okay. All right. With our powers combined. So, oh, I get it. You're all putting your rings in there. Those we four, the form cor- of seahorse. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, what uh, is going on? Hat. We have to get into the episode. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Not uh, ninety pots. Uh, we are setting sail. Dishes will be flying out of cabinets. Glenn will be slaughtering people, and the sea rats will be fucking and sucking. Mm-hmm. Uh, we begin our journey at Port Mahon, a beautiful seaside village that Glenn will ram his boat into at some point. <laughs> um, Gary is first on board, um, and he's been there for a while. He's looking more like a trucker named Gretchen than ever before. You know, he's he's a tough bitch, but um, we get a little backstory on. Uh, the fact that Gary has been with Glenn for some time now. He admired his work ethic and his uh, mullet so much that he asked him to stay on in this place that Glenn so loves. He has, he has a place there, actually. Yeah, so Glenn gives us a little history on why he fell in love with Spain. Um, uh, he's not very forthright about why he found purchase here. Um, he said it was the the vistas and the the food but we all know that it was probably the sloppy policing and easy access to very deep points of water but um he's very passionate about the city so i'm glad you said that uh so many pained parents in that area that will never see their beloved daughters again i wonder if glenn will give us a peek in that apartment at some point i bet there's a basement regardless i still love the man he's (laughs) one of the best captains on the show you have to forgive people 100%. One hundred percent. Yeah, you know this uh, show, as you pointed out at the top of the show, has been behind a paywall. Right. So only uh, like maybe a couple thousand people uh, know what oh, we're hinting that's at. That's right. Here. We have a running bit of Glenn being a vicious, vicious serial killer who targets vulnerable women of the night. Well, let's explain his process. <laughs> right. He's one of the most even keeled, nicest, logical human beings. Basically, twenty four seven in front He's of the Dexter. cameras. He's the nicest guy. He handles things as you would hope a manager or a person in leadership would. But no one's perfect. What do you do to, I don't know, burn the midnight oil or unwind? Unwind. Get some of that, <laughs> some of that anger out. Yeah. He kills prostitutes in Europe. Right. That's our theory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe we'll have Glenn on, and we'll get to ask him about it. Yeah. Yeah. Really looking forward to that. Well, we're working with Bravo now. All right, our so, white murderous I whale. I don't know if we have, if we are any longer. So, um, we do learn that Gary's been under his tutelage. They've been busy. Um, unfortunately, their fun has to take a bit of a break when Daisy comes aboard. She is back and as Irish and dependable as ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, Daisy doesn't. You know, I, I I like Daisy a lot, but you know, she's she's uh, she's a straight man on this show. I felt like last season. Uh, 
and maybe she would. I felt like she just loved gossip so much, and oftentimes things were going smoothly, and she would she would find a problem where there wasn't one. Right. Uh, so we'll see what happens when she's coming in already liking her coworkers. <laughs> like it was it was this weird like aversion to Gary, her rival, the other department head right, last right, season, right. but now they're. They're gonna fuck in the hot. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna be boyfriend and girlfriend soon. So, um, anything more on Daisy before we get to Chef Marcos? Oh, let's get to Marcos. All right, so uh, Chef Marcos uh, has a uh, yeah, you know, he's well practiced in the culinary arts. He has a food truck. Uh, what was it called again? Meats LA or, or, or no? Shit, I fucked it up. All right, so many people. ML eats. You're not gonna believe this. The wife is watching the show. Kind of, she's not into Below Deck as much as me. We're watching it together. Well, she saw notes. him on Chopped one time. No, she hired his company. This is like he underplayed. He downplayed. It's a food truck. Like this is a business that caters like a list celebrities and shit. Yeah. So, you know, people could obviously hear food truck or catering and think, uh, you know, less than. You know, think but, of guys that are like hanging sheet wall and then you walk out to a you know, a truck with food in it. Right. That's not this. They sling tortas and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or hot dogs. And I don't doubt the tacos are good, but you shouldn't be serving the wealthiest people in the world. Well, listen, many great, great foods can be consumed from a food truck, you know, i.e. Um, Gidea tacos, you know, Wes Avila. You know, incredible stuff like that. But I will say that pasta and plantain sounds fucking gross as shit. So we'll see um, about these sea rats. You know, someone the other night was like, ah, what, what I would do to have some of Chef Rachel's food. And I said, that was me. No, I don't. It wasn't you. Um, but they said, oh, what I would do to have a, a meal cooked by her. And that was me. No, it wasn't you. I'm sorry. But they said, you know, well, what, what I would do to have a meal cooked by her. And I said. Well, you could just go out to a bunch of restaurants in Los Angeles. It's probably better. It's like a ton of... She's a, she's a fucking chef on a boat. Like, <laughs> I understand that she's good for being a chef on a boat, but there are, there are chefs on land, and they're incredible. But she impressed former sh- uh, crab shack owner, Captain Lee Rushbar. What is his last name? So... Rosbar. Douchebag. Uh, someone, <laughs> uh, excuse me. So there's a difference between, you know, the Voltagios and the Sea Rats. Anyway, speaking of Sea Rats, they begin to trickle in. We meet my mortal enemy, uh, Gabriella. Uh, she says that uh, people who love her would describe her as a uh, shit talker. Pat, you love her. How would you describe her? Well, she's my kind of people. She's right. a ball buster. I think that's why we get along. We yep. keep it real. I noticed on her first part of the episode, she's asking questions, get mixing it up, getting to know people. A lot of people are quiet. I'm not comfortable with that. I like someone that asks questions. Right. No eye contact, though. Oh, no, 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 no. Got to keep the eyes it's left, right, up, or down. Too intimate. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Anything on Ashley and or Kelsey? Mm. Ashley seems smart. Tom is already eyeing out Ashley. I mean, these sea rats are on this boat for like four and a half minutes, and they're all like, oh, I think I'd fuck her, mate. All right. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of Tom, um, he joins us from Lake Windermere. Uh, he's been in motor yachting, but the only difference is the sailing. And he says, how hard... Can that be? And that's what's so beautiful about this show. Um, hiring this young man um, seems dangerous. Um, a liability, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But very entertaining. You know, who cares about the wealthy sliding into the ocean, you know? <laughs> <laughs> We're here for it. Get the most inexperienced person you can and put him on the fucking donkey. See what happens. So, uh, the man, the myth, the sea dog is aboard next. Colin is back. A true gent, a true island spirit. Smoke cigs, live and let live. Was it good to see him, boys? It was great to see him. He's a guy that I would hang out with. Uh, Problem is, once again, he's on this boat and he's coupled up. So, we're not going to see him filling any holes, okay? So, he's dead weight. As far as this podcast is concerned. But he's not dead weight because as we saw last season, though he's not involved in the drama, uh, he likes to cheat on his girlfriend in private. I don't know that for a fact. That was like a joke. I really like Colin. I don't want to besmirch his name. No, no, no. Uh, But he still loves the drama and he... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a gossipy bitch. Yeah, he's a gossipy bitch, but so am I. What do I need him for? He's, I got you two. Because you're not on the boat, Pat. You're he's, not on the boat, he's, Pat. He's stirring the pot. I watched... Uh, Ashley and Glenn helped dish the W the four one one on WWHL with Andy 
in his clubhouse. In his clubhouse. And they, they did like this rapid fire game, who was the most on the boat. Mm-hmm. And uh, biggest pot stirrer, both unanimous. Ashley and Glenn both said Colin. Oh, we knew oh, that. Yeah, we this knew I that. this I found interesting though. Worst work work ethic on the boat. Ashley said Colin. I've I've oh. thought of him as like this staunch. Well, well they Ashley's, keep you alive on the boat, Ashley. Ashley's Watch your 20, tongue, dear. Yeah, Ashley's twenty three and has no idea what he does. Yeah, so. he's down there looking at meters and stuff to make sure they don't run into. Oh shit, they ran into a. Uh, I guess yeah, he fucked up. Uh, okay, Glenn said Tom. They show it in the trailer, Dylan. So uh, he interrupts. Uh, Colin interrupts a riveting conversation between Gabriella and Daisy, and we move on. So um, before we move on, let's take a quick break to hear a word from a very important sponsor. Guys, you know it very well. It is the anti-procrastination drug. It is Magic Mind. Now, guys, this is an influencer serum now, okay? All the hotties, all the you know entrepreneurs, the Gary V's, the Logan P's, all these people are sucking this stuff down. And if you want to be a high-level operator like these people and like us... I was just going to say, the Dylan Dubs, the Nick D's, yeah. and the Pat H's. You got to go to Magic Mind. Dot co, you have to uh, enter in promo code. What is it? Lee. Unfortunately, still Lee. It's still Lee. So you got to go to matchmind.co, enter in promo code Lee to get 25% off your order, Pat. All right. So I've brought this up a couple times. Uh, my nanny, uh, Lupita, she started drinking it out of the fridge. She didn't ask permission. I guess we said whenever you tell someone, yeah, you don't have that kind of household though, right? Well, Where she I do. I said, you know permission. what, Mikasa, Sukasa, help yourself to anything. That didn't mean go into my magic mind, right? Uh, cache, right? Okay, because magic mind is important. So. Before I knew it, they're just disappearing, and I'm seeing the empty bottles in there. And I've already said this. I'm very disappointed in her. She quit. Right. And then the next day she drove up in a uh, Ferrari and she said, see you later, suckers. Uh, atten- uh, apparently she played the stocks after drinking some magic mind. She focused and she became a multimillionaire. Yeah. Yeah. She came by the other day. She had the fucking gall. Right. She said, uh, I want to buy the house. How much is it? I said, it's not for sale. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And she said, oh, no, it is. That's exactly what she said. That's she said, what you can achieve with Magic Mind. It's got matcha. It's got echinacea. It's got lion's mane. It's got 11. Oh, excuse me. Nine other magical ingredients. I didn't take my Magic Mind this morning. But you will each and every day. You will support us. You will. You will. You're going to do it. Go I want 10 of you right now. This week. Go ahead, Nick. Uh, Arizona Missions within the ad read. We, we're just going to switch the promo code to Glenn. That's G-L-E-N-N. Promo code Two Lee. Two N's. Huh? Yeah. Promo code Lee will work, but if you want to give us credit for this season, use promo code Glenn. And if Glenn doesn't work because this is tomorrow... That, uh, use promo code, code Lee. Lee. Yeah. Pat, final One thoughts. last thing. But use Glenn. I need 10 brave, loyal souls. Come on. You know you want to be that person. Make Patty happy. I'm going to Corey Feldman concert tonight at Whiskey A Go-Go to make you guys laugh next week. Please, you owe this to me. 10 of you, brave souls, loyal souls. Uh, souls. Get out Buy there, souls. Buy it. Yeah. Buy Magic Mind. I think it's like 40 bucks or something. You'll be happy. It's more expensive than that, but use promo code GLEN. Two ends. Let's move on. Just very quickly, because I'm leaving in 13 minutes, speaking of the Corey Feldman concert, can you guys on your way there kind of do a little like, just like talk about your feelings on the way to the concert? That's all I need. Yeah, yeah. Can I mention how I think it's a giant waste of time? Are you going to be okay with that? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay, cool. uh, absolutely. I'm kind All of right. in between you and uh, Dell and Nick. Oh, there's definitely an uh, element of wasting time, but I also think the extracurricular activities kind of gives enthusiasm to our crowd and we'll make content out of it. And once you see Brian's fire edit that he's going to do with all we're doing, you'll see my vision. Yeah, join Most us on artists. Patreon. We're, uh, we're ambushing Corey Feldman tonight for dropping the price of his Love Set 2.1 down to uh, $220 when we... Did not, but did buy it at three hundred and fifty dollars. We have to get back to the show, and it has been a, uh, or it is, I guess, it's considered a waste of time, but it's a much larger waste of money thus far. <laughs> okay, so Tom likes Ashley's gigantic breasts, and Ashley likes Tom's gigantic head. These two are going to be perfect for one another. Mm-hmm. They're both twenty three. They're both beautiful. I am looking forward to their matrimony. He really dried her up, though, uh, puking okay. all over the bathroom. All I'm right. just saying. Not, don't get ahead of yourself, Nick. Come on. Okay. She said it on WWHL. I heard it when she helped at your 411 in the oh. 80s clubhouse. Yeah, oh, she okay. did say, oh, that's such uh, a young thing to do. We'll get to her. She's very annoying. 
Okay, so uh, Glenn calls the crew together to tell them a few rules. No drinking, communicate well. If you see blood on my clothes, keep your fucking mouth shut. But aside <laughs> from that, everyone just behave like adults. You know, there is no talk of eating ass. There is There are no threatening envelopes with zero plane tickets in them whatsoever. Right. This is just a welcome. Let's all get along and work hard. Mm -hmm. There's no... If I catch you with your walkie off, you'll be swimming 20,000 leagues under the sea with a bottle of Coke rammed up your fucking, you know, it's like, yeah. it's a, well, so no shut douche, up. No douche bag talk. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, last time I'll bring up uh, Ashley and Glenn helping dish the 411 in Andy's clubhouse on WWHL. But Glenn, they did play another rapid fire game with him. And they asked him what he would do in these situations that arose with Captain Lee. And one of them they asked him was, what would you do if you had some fucking pervert with mental issues taking his pants off in public all the time? Mm -hmm. And Gled said if he heard about it one more time, he'd be off the boat. What happened? What was that? Jake. Oh, Jake. That's right. Oh, yeah, Jake. That's but yeah, Glenn went to stood for that. He would have tossed him. That I believe falls under the guy, uh, the the bounds of embarrassing the boat yeah. and yourself. Yeah, but he doesn't say it expressly. He just knows that they're adults, and if they don't uh, know that they can't get naked in public every time they go out, uh, they'll be fired. So, anyways, um, Kelsey, we hear of monos and cats and uh, cool. I, I can't get a read on her. I don't know if she's a rich girl or if she was brought on a rich person's vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, as a friend, and then she starts working on the boats. Yeah, Is that, she wealthy? I'm not sure. She was the least filmed in this this episode am i right because i kept confusing yeah. her with ashley for about like 10 seconds i'm right. like who is this person yeah i don't know it's kelsey she's on the deck uh the deck team uh she seems funny mm. i think we'll we'll get to know more of her as we progress i think she's also challenging uh gary because gary ain't into it and uh it takes a lot for him not to be uh into something oh no he'll f he'll find a way to get into it <laughs> She's one of the arch. He'd try to fuck himself in the mirror if he could. <laughs> he'll he'll be into it. Uh, she's one of the archetypes uh, of Comedia del Andy uh, on Below Deck. She's the quirky stew. She's our Jess. She's our Caroline. Oftentimes backfires. I think in this case though, she's gonna go under the radar because she's just a quirky weirdo who does her job. She could be that Florida sea rat that Gary uh, did doggy style with. Okay, so Daisy and Marco have a little chat. She approaches him with a little lee, kind of like foreboding and bracing for impact already. Uh, but that doesn't phase Marco. He's cooked for Jay Z, Shakira, Queen B, her husband. Now hold on, Jenny from the block, which means I wrote down he worked at a booth at Coachella. But uh -huh. evidently, <laughs> um, well, what he left out is that it was at a, a party that they hired his food truck for. Sure, they were all there at the same time. Right, right, These right. These fucking people love to pad their resumes. Oh yeah, you got to. Freaking got to, baby. But we'll talk about him. We'll talk to him and find out the, the severity of that lie later on in the season. So, <laughs> anyways. Need a meanwhile? Meanwhile. Colin says, uh, Tom can call him whatever he wants. I don't know, just say he's such a fucking sea dog. And then uh, shit gets wiped and uh, put away, and we uh, get a little uh, little Gabby on Ashley. Now, I, or, I, I don't mean to, maybe that was Freudian. I, I they're wish. talking to one another. Uh, so Gabby is celebrating her one year anniversary in yachting and telling Ashley that sometimes she falls asleep and misses obligations that she's agreed. <laughs> oh, no, I'm kidding. You leave her alone. I'm kidding. So hold on, hold um, on, hold on. Is it so? This is when the interior uh, starts to get to know one one of one another. What's going on? Well, I'm starting to get. He's tired. a point. He's worried that he's going to miss. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, I got to go see Corey Feldman in ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, Ashley graduated college. She worked her ass off. And she states that now she uh, aspires to reach the mountain peak that is making drinks for rich people. Okay. We all have dreams. So let's talk about that. <laughs> let's talk about that. So, yeah. So she got straight A's in high school, said she worked hard in college. Which, I love that. Which means that uh, the GPA dropped a little bit. <laughs> um, but, alas, she did become a sea rat. Now, we've, we're have we very practiced at this show. And we know that... Um, Diving or delving further into, the, you know, the causation of her becoming a sea rat is really it's it's it'll just be anticlimactic. You know, it's like finding out a magician's trick. It's like, oh, there's a magnet underneath the table. OK, you know, yeah. we don't 
We don't read really, really detail. You know, it's pain, divorce, you know, see, whatever. <laughs> Nick pressed the napkin against the salt shaker so hard it formed the shape of the salt shaker. So when he lifted it, you were looking at the quarter, but he actually just dropped the salt shaker <laughs> in right. his lap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's not levitating. He's just standing on one foot <laughs> at a certain angle. It's very unimpressive. <laughs> All right. I, I actually wonder, though, if Ashley, uh, I'm, I'm, one, I'm, uh, I'm hoping not. I'm knocking on wood. That below deck has not jumped the shark the way the bachelor has, and this Marvel universe of characters that has sprung up to become influencers is not infiltrating. Because, because uh, uh, from well, her, why do you say that? From her Instagram, Ashley seems seems to have been like a bottle service girl in Florida. She meets someone on a yacht. They're like, oh, there's there's this <laughs> show. You'd be perfect for it. And and then so she do you have a high enough GPA for this kind of work. <laughs> <laughs> so so I just hope she's sincere about wanting you to be the best do she can be she probably is and we are uh, look forward to getting to know more of her I, th- I feel so weird now that we're going to talk to all these people you know no don't don't let that affect your performance all right so the producers have set up a rivalry perfectly um gabby and ashley will be fighting for pole position seconds to so Sea rats speak of sex and smut. Anything on that? We'll get ball of snake stuff in uh, in no time. You guys have anything on this? Just that I like that we're talking about in the galley. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. like that Marcos was a little turned off by oh, all, yeah, all, yeah. The, all the sex talk. Marco Marco slays, but he doesn't have to p- fucking. Is talk it Marcos about it. or Marco? I don't Marcos. know. Marcos. Okay. Marcos. <coughs> I guess that makes sense. Why the ass? It's not Marcos Polo. Why the ass? Well, uh, your, name, your, name's, to, your hard, name's Patrick, right? It's hard. To Why the pronounce. P? I don't know. It's a great question. Okay. So, um, first and foremost, we have to get to the first and foremost of the season. It is time. It is Marcos? Yeah. Oh, okay. For the preference. Mag! Can I take the music out and just have that? I really get a kick out of that 30 seconds of music. Okay, all right. It also stretches the show. It stretches the show, which we don't which we don't need. There's plethora of material except tonight when we're about to see Corey Feldman. And we also cover Love is Blind, Patreon. Would it be a bad episode title to just call this episode We're gonna go see Corey Feldman? It might be a weird search. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First app. I'm, I, I, we've never done sailing on the free feed, but right. I don't hate it. Yeah. Primary, McCordia Young from Washington, D.C. McCordia is a talented real estate investor at the top of the, his game in the Washington, D.C. area. He has gathered his group of friends, all hardworking business owners in real estate, for the trip of a lifetime to celebrate black entrepreneurship. We have McCordia's business partner, partner and former lover, Newman. Norman. Is Norman the uh, the one the character that uh, hit on Gabby? No, as we mentioned in this uh, upcoming. No, Norman was the ex lover. Oh, okay. Oh, McCordia sorry. was. The, I just want to get the names right. McCordia, the primary, McCordia. was the one that accosted. He our, said he had a small dick. Our dear friend Gabby, or arch nemesis, depending on who you talk to. Uh, mm. Not me. I've forgiven her. Me too. Norman and McCordia <laughs> have been split for several years. <laughs> But remain close in work and life. Yeah. Also joining is Liesel. That means they bought a house together and they can't get rid of each other. And but also it means that McCordy is like, I want to try some pussy. Mm-hmm. I feel like that. Yeah. Okay. You know, you hit on Gabby. It makes sense. You gotta. Why go are you s- looking at me well, like I'm that? I'm just saying you gotta go see Corey Feldman. We gotta get through this preference. I know. I've, I've, I've let him let the man come on. This is the best part of the show. Yeah. I'll probably exit after the preference sheet meeting. All right. And for you those, want me, you want me for to those, rush through the first for, preference sheet meeting? No, I don't. But for those who are confused, <clears throat> yes, Nick is getting up and leaving the first episode of the season <laughs> to go be on time for a Corey Feldman show, at which there will be thirty-seven people. And by the way, Nick, I'll be joining you when the opening band. <laughs> 
is wrapping up their second song. Warhammer. <laughs> they told me Corey's the only one they playing. They lie to you. They want you to show up early and buy drinks. That's how the club makes money. You didn't hear the gentleman I talked to. I talked to him yesterday. I said, hey, what time's Corey go on tomorrow night? My boss is calling. He's an A&R guy from, uh, I don't know, some record company. Hey. He says he's playing here. Hey, we're in the middle of something right now, man. Come on. I'm torn, though, because I could Come talk on, about this man. for longer. All right, back to the preference sheet meeting. <laughs> My guy that I talked to at the Whiskey, <laughs> a.k.a. the house that Corey built, did not lie to me. He's going okay. on at nine sharp. He's live streaming on his YouTube channel. Channel. He just released actually at eight p.m. Pacific. The comeback premiered it on YouTube, Nick, and I fucking missed it. I'm done. Okay, you fine. have to shut up. Uh, also joining is Liesel, one of the twenty, the top twenty producing real estate agents in Maryland. Yeah, she can't wait for top notch service throughout the trip. <laughs> Aaliyah, another realtor, loves meeting new people. And experiencing life to the fullest. <laughs> yeah. She will be celebrating her birthday and would like a hip hop, we don't stop pajama party for night two. And are hoping to see the crew dress up as well. We talk a lot about the chookiness of the white parties, the highlighter parties, the silent discos. Uh, I have not yeah. heard. There's no. We've never heard of a hop and jop and uh, pajama party. There's a there's a worse sin than chuggy, evidently, and it's called stupid. Hey uh, <laughs> Nick, did they also put on that preference sheet that they prefer a dump truck to back in and lower all the food they want to eat? <laughs> Oh, holy shit. I mean, you're on vacation. <laughs> this but is there is a point shit. where you stop. Honestly, you're 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 a little taken aback, Dylan. But I will say their lack of consumption was conspicuously missing from the preference sheet. Honestly, they should have been like, you know how like your idea of seconds, that's our hors d'oeuvres. You didn't struggle through say it. the word. Right? <laughs> struggle through it. I... I'm riffing in the middle of the preference she being. This is no, I know this is word. fucking crazy. We're sorry. on a high wire right now. Sorry, sorry. They are looking forward to beautiful scenery, flowing cocktails, and a five-star dining experience. Day day two, they want a picnic, and that concludes the preference meeting. So, um, oh, something. and McCordia deleted all his Instagram pictures. <laughs> okay, so quick thing about this uh, preference sheet meeting. It's been um, a tough couple of weeks. Carlos. Um, hears all of their dietary preferences and he is once again not phased. He's called Carlos. Well, <laughs> well, did I? Yeah. Microaggression. Sorry, right. Marcos. Mm -hmm. Says, um, you know, it's okay. Uh, I've been to DC. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, uh, we got a little sit down with the stews up next. Gabby is going to be tapped as second stew. She gets to stay up all night while uh, gay drunks hit on her. And uh, and Ashley will be doing uh, laundry, which is going to, I don't know, just leave Ashley, I think, unfulfilled. Uh, and that might lead to making mistakes. Who knows? Um, you do a lot of dumb shit when you're 23. So the and day is over. Likes you. The day is over, and that means the sea rats can begin to drink before the sun goes down. Um, there is an OG meeting about work ethic and company culture, and that quickly devolves into who's going to fuck one another. I loved it. Colin is such a gossipy bitch. It's 530 somewhere. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, Lord Windermere rolls up asking for a fucking ciggy. <clears throat> uh, quick story. I was having a ciggy the other night. We were walking to... Um, uh, Barbacari or whatever the fuck that place is. You know I place? love that place. Isn't that place incredible? Uh, yes. Oh, my God. Except they got to warn you when you walk up the stairs, I hit my head on the branch. Well, yeah, no, it's it's it'll be chuggy soon. I'm pretty sure it's chuggy right now. And uh, The word chuggy is chuggy. It is. Mm -hmm. Totally. It's true. But so we're walking there and we're enjoying a ciggy. And I realized that uh, uh, my dear friend and I are blowing smoke behind us. And mm -hmm. it's going into the face of this woman who's walking behind us at a, at a really steady pace. And she, she's... She's out it's cold out, so she has a shroud on, and she's kind of hunched over. So, so I stop us, and I say, "Oh, please go through." And um, I gotta hear what happens. It sounds like you were honestly about to be like 
tested whether or not you're going to get into heaven. No, no, no. She she reveals herself to be a gutter wench, and uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was startling. I I was scared of her because she kind of just like appeared out of uh, from underneath that hood. And uh, and ironically, hey, the reason it. she was so close to you is because she was trying to suck in that cigarette. Well, smoke exactly. That you blew. <laughs> I she said, "Don't worry, I love cigarettes. Can I have one?" And I said, "What a mistake I've made." <laughs> out loud, she didn't find it funny. Let's get back to the show. Oh, yeah, Did you let's see get back the to band, the show. Dylan. Something that you touched yes, on the before band was you incredible. Uh, weave that tale that you just did. I told the bartender to make me whatever he wants as long as it had mezcal, and I see him pulling out all of the ingredients for my favorite drink, the last word, with gin, lime juice, maraschino liqueur, and um, green chartreuse. And I, I see the mezcal, and I see yellow chartreuse, and I see the lime juice, and I go, what is happening right now? And he said, it, it's called The Last Amigos. This is for you. What a wonderful night. That's a great bartender. $22 I, later. I, I assume that most of the time they get annoyed and they're like, can't you get something off the menu, Pat? You see how frustrated he is? I'm not frustrated right, at we're, all. We're, 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 we've gotten off topic and Way I blame to myself. Way hit that R. I've learned a lot from both of you. <laughs> Let me, I want to discuss the dynamic of this boat because this is the first time I've seen this. Obviously, there's a hierarchy of these people are the chiefs or the bosun or what have you. Right, right, right. But this particular season, because these guys are ready to party and fill holes, you know, the, the hierarchy, the OGs will call Gary and Daisy and Colin, yeah. right? Uh, they're talking about the baby sea rats in which sucking and fucking, uh, those little baby, uh, it's like high school. Mm -hmm. it, 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 they begin telling the underclassmen like, Hey, I heard, uh, Ashley likes you more than a friend. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're yeah. trying to get these guys to fuck. You're not going to believe this, but she's, uh, into you. Exactly. Right. And later on, like they even come in there and uh, Daisy and Colin share with the underclassmen how they almost banged in the hot tub last uh, in last, uh, I guess, last year in high school right, or right. charter or whatever. Right, right. They're setting the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you guys going to fuck a lot. And oh then we God, might yeah. fuck you, too, because we're seniors and we get to do that. I had the same analogy. Senior refreshment. You did. Was, well, yeah. yeah, you all. Yeah, you brought that up at the top of the show. I'm still in your idea. Oh, I didn't even. I wasn't even referring to that, but it was like first day of school, and I am a senior, and I'm not going to finish that hey, thought. So but, oh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't have a thought, except I had the same thought. I'm I, sorry. Uh, I'm going to bid you guys. I'm going to say Bon guys Voyage, leave. guys. Bon Voyage. Permission Godspeed. to leave You could the tell when he was talking, he was torn. He was in two places. Do I stay <laughs> and finish the premiere episode of our biggest franchise, or do I get up and go see and give Warhammer the for two hours. Another podcast the network. Warhammer is going to see. Uh, or the best promo another podcast network has ever Let seen. Let me tell you something. If Corey Feldman doesn't hit the stage a minute before <laughs> um, 9-19, I will be up in that manager of the Whiskey A Go-Go's ass. Oh, you lied to me. Hey, look bastard. out, Lee. All right. All right. We got we to gotta finish the show. Yeah, yeah. We're, okay. we're running I want to hey, say this. Hey, before uh, we move on, should we take a break to... to Hear a word from our sponsors. Let's do or that. Or should we get to? Let's uh, cut to the Gabby interview. Yeah, we'll t we'll t listen to a C rat. Sorry, this episode is so unorganized, but there's a lot of moving parts tonight and a lot of gold goblets. Brian's here, our editor. It, it which comes with got a lot of shit. So let's take a are. quick break and let's talk to one Gabriel Maragon. Uh, say Maragon. It's Baragon. Baragon. Uh, Gabby. Thanks for being awake for this. We really appreciate it. She's laughing. Bad yeah. sound. Bad Wi-Fi. Yeah. You remember how she didn't uh, come to the last one because oh, she was start sleeping? With that. Do you remember that? Well, she had a flight the night before. Then she had to come in, I guess, and do all those like uh, yeah. OTFs or something like that. Yeah, it's so cool how people. Uh, First of all, don't you re don't you guys remember pushing the meeting back two hours? Oh. Oh, wait, speaking of pushing back, are you pushing back right now? You were fast asleep for an appointment. What are you doing? And I don't even think we did that. Yeah. Gabby, it's it good knows. to have you. Seriously. Yeah, you did. It's good to see you again. Thank you. It's so you're really gonna, nice to see you guys. Bygones be bygones. <laughs> you're not mad that she flaked on us when she was supposed to come on the show last time. Uh, still very much so. Mm. Uh, but we need to work well with Gabby <laughs> uh, for one season of Below Deck. I, I wanted to get this out, so let's pretend we just saw her. Well, 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 look who decided <laughs> to show up. Okay, now I'm putting it to bed. We're done. All right, Thank you so for being we are here. done. Uh, you uh, had a lovely first showing. The first episode was uh, fun. Uh, ended up not being so fun for you. Great uh, TV, though. Great TV. Uh, you were uh, hit on by 
Uh, I was very confused. Was he gay? It was a very confusing uh, hitting upon a, a woman because he said he was gay. He said he had a tiny penis, but he was very, very intense. Maybe we uh, <laughs> maybe we put this right before the preference sheet meeting within the episode. But yes, in fact, he he is a homosexual man. Oh, okay. Got he it. was dating uh, before they came on the boat. He was dating Norman. Uh, they have bro- since broken up, but got they work. It. They still have a great working relationship. All right, All right we're gonna get there because I want to hear. Uh, should we let her? Should we have oh, yeah. her? Should we have her speak? Yeah, she's on the show. Okay, yeah. Uh, all right, you start with the questions. Oh my god! You, all right, you go with the questions. All right, first off, Gabby, you great. Guys, I'm still adjusting my lighting. Hold on, and uh, I'm sorry you had to see the ring light. What were you gonna say, Patrick? Uh, where <laughs> are you right now? You look like you're a yacht. You're being a sea rat on a boat somewhere. Where are you? I am absolutely a sea rat, 100%. I'm on a boat in St. Thomas, and um, I'm sorry you had to see the ring light just there. I'm a bit embarrassed, but my tanning and the lighting looks great. What were you going to ask? Well, I was just asking where the hell you were. So this is the crazy thing about this show is we see you guys on TV, and a lot of uh, America goes, hey, they're on TV. They must be millionaires. Like, you know, Bravo's a big network or something. Who thinks that? Well, you see people on TV, you think like they're doing well or something like that. They don't realize that these... (laughs) People that are on this show below deck. You guys, actually- <laughs> please Google, please Google Wes's net worth. Wes? Wes's net worth. I'm sure he does well. Doesn't he own his own business? Oh, yeah. Wait, right, what? Right, right. But we were just laughing. We were just laughing the other day. Uh, we found out that his net worth online is like $300,000. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Wait, is, are you saying that that's not real? <laughs> I'm saying that. Well, it probably is. He's probably being modest. But Google mine. If it says one dollar, that would be very accurate. <laughs> there well, you go. Yeah. So this is a shaky start. So the implication is that she's not doing well. That's no. what you're saying. No, the implication that is, is the implication. We're, what we're witnessing is we're seeing yachties actually work on boats. This isn't like some fake TV show. They're going to get done filming and they're going to have to jump on another charter, another charter season. Yes. So we're getting authentic people yes. on television. Thanks, Pat. Uh, that's basically what I was getting at because you guys just said that I sh- I'm doing well because we're on TV. That that's what the audience thinks. I am doing well, but do we have money? Sometimes not really. <laughs> okay, Ben, can there, we, sister. Can we lighten it up and talk about how you were sexually harassed, please? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we were talking about it off mic. You are a a vet with this kind of disgusting behavior. Um you worked in bars for a very very long time. So I'm sure that you were able to dip dodge dive and whatever the other uh 3 or 4 or 5 are uh from that one movie about uh, Dodge dodgeball. Duck. Yeah, it's uh, called duck. dodgeball. Um so was this um I know we're going to end on a cliffhanger, but what were the feelings going through you when you were being assaulted with this kind of gross, gross talk? Well, if you guys couldn't tell by my defeated body language, what I was going through, right. then uh, you're not very observant. Secondly, uh, I was like, I've been in here before. Um, <clears throat> but what was not comfortable is that this is like a super yacht and uh this is the primary. So I was just really not used to that on yeah. the, in this setting. Yeah. So it's usually a trash it poor was, friend of really... the guest. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Right? It, exactly. It's probably, you were probably conflicted because he was the guy that was paying for it when it's usually the bro who got, you know, who tagged along and he uh, sells sneakers. <laughs> Gabby, sorry to, uh, to interrupt you, um, but... Well, that was one of the questions was, is this a common thing? Like, you know, they got these people with a bunch of money, a guy of a certain age, and he thinks his money that he's paying for this vacation also includes that you're going to go along with this nonsense. Is this, So this isn't common to you on this level of yacht? Well, not for me, <laughs> but it does happen. And I've been propositioned before, but they were at least offering me money. Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> Romantic. Wow. <laughs> The, the 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 first time we talked to oh. you on our on our show before we even knew that you were a cast member uh was uh you told us about like you got in some trouble for the most minor of quote unquote talking back to a charter guest in this moment I'm sure like that was running through your mind but did you have at all because I thought you handled it well and you kind of told him what was up and you said that's a little inappropriate were you emboldened at all by being on TV and maybe you might have 
handled it differently if if the cameras weren't there? Absolutely not. Um, I think I handled it as I would in any in any setting in any position I've ever held. The next morning, oops, spoiler. Never mind. No, uh, no spoilers. Anyway, no spoilers, Gabby. Even my bad, Dylan. You, you uh, I, I like no, what you said. I, you think you did it the same as you would have regularly. I would have done. I would have done it the same as I would anywhere at Soho House in New York City, at a dive bar in fucking San Diego. I would have been like, "You need to go." Yeah, yeah. You know, Soho House is chuggy now. Yeah, I do. I know. Yeah. Okay, wow. So, well, I have to say, I, Dylan. Honestly, Dylan, I don't know <laughs> what we need to do to work through this. Yeah. But, uh, we're gonna have to work through it. Do I need no, to no, go to a five star no, Michelin restaurant? No, no, no. Like... And Gabby, Michelin only goes up to three. You know that. But we are fine. <laughs> we are fine. I was just taking a shot at so at Soho House, not you. Yeah, no yeah. shots. At yeah, you. yeah. Um, all right. I have a question about. Or actually, a listener did. So, Mark Marcos seems like an amazing chef. Was he cooking for you guys on this charter? Wow, what a delight that he is! He was cooking for us and. He was cooking for us, and he was also making us our own separate meals. Unfortunately, I didn't get to eat them when they were, like, fresh out of the oven because I was too busy working. Right. Uh, And and I got very pissed when I saw everyone else eating them. And uh, you'll see that later. Stay tuned. Right. Um, But, like, his food is fucking amazing. Yeah, he seems like he's he's, uh, he's, got it together. He's, like, in the below deck world, it's like him and Chef Rachel are, like, Ooh, wow. wow. Like, okay, wow. all right, all right, okay. All right, uh, hopefully uh, PR from Bravo allows that to get through. All I, right, well, uh, I, I am. Uh, I love how you taunted the person <laughs> who's on the Zoom with us. So, um, <laughs> I, yeah, oh, go ahead. I just, uh, I I immediately, I, I mean, I'm no culinary expert like Dylan, but I was impressed by what Marcos had to offer, and I'm intrigued by the fact that he has an L.A. food tr- truck, and I will be taking, uh, uh, what, what do you, um, uh, what do you, when people go to Mecca, what's that called? A taxi. Pilgrimage. A pilgrimage to... A taxi. To, <laughs> <laughs> what is this? The uh, Oregon Trail? <laughs> I will be taking a pilgrimage to At Meets LA, finding out where his truck is. Everybody follow Marcus's truck. Hell yeah. Now, I know we don't have Gabby for a long time, but I got a couple more questions. Uh, all right. I, one of the great parts... Ask one of them. Okay. <laughs> one of the best parts of the episode was the fact that you guys decided to put one on. The first day. Yeah. I mean, you guys knew each other for six hours, and now you guys start partying. That's on a C-Rats. school night. Yeah. Well, understood. Right. But, all right. So, Gabby, how uh, is that something that happens when you, uh, is that something commonplace for your first day or second day on a charter? I wish I could say no. Um, <laughs> but also, uh, I have been in trouble for drinking too much the night before charter on a different boat without any cameras. So, it's a definite no, no. And like, it's even an unspoken, you do not drink the night before a charter. So we really fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> it was wonderful TV. Now, um, I, w- I would uh, blame it on Glenn a little bit. He gave a bunch of sea wraps. Six, six, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. What he, gave a, he gave a bunch of sea rats six inches of rope uh, <laughs> and they took a yard. Why are you so flatulent? <laughs> Uh, flatulent is, I think, uh, specifically out of the butt. It's out of I the not- rectum. It's out of the rectum. Yeah. And he does have plenty of those issues, too. But um, You can't hear that. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, the, the issue with drinking aboard <laughs> uh, a yacht like this is, of course, your, uh, your employer does not want you to be grossly hungover to the point of needing to be hospitalized the next day. But the, the unique <laughs> position on the boat is that if your boss does happen to have a Lord Windermere kind of uh, zombie step on his face, he can get up and see what's actually going on. You know, your boss in, on land can't really see what you guys do with the Corey Feldman show at the Whiskey A Go Go the night right, before, right, but Glenn right. can witness all of it. Now, last question. <laughs> um, Glenn is the greatest captain in Bravo's Below Deck universe, the Cosmere of Below Deck, uh, despite his appetite for blood he is an incredible incredible uh captain we're gonna see if that's gonna fly with, <laughs> with bravo but anyway I think we just let leslie allude or <laughs> just lightly allude to it like you just right, did right so we all know about his thirst for blood um gabby how was how how was glenn i guess let's not talk about it in broadly speaking but that first night how do you think glenn handled that i thought that he handled it perfectly 
Uh, very cool, very calm, very collected, but just the right amount of flame. And Are you going to ask me a question and then input your your opinion <laughs> in it? It's a great question. You you listen to I us. Really it's don't. a great question. Yeah. I got I black out sometimes when <laughs> I'm rambling. Do you want my opinion? Yes. Or do you want to listen to yours? That's so weird. I do. <laughs> um, Fire burn, Gabby. Okay, ball buster. Yeah, she's funny. Maybe I'm a little bit off about how you guys talk shit about me when I didn't show up to the fucking last meeting. Now I got it out. Fine. Everything's okay. fine. Right. What so a good I character trait to lash out at those you wronged. <laughs> <laughs> well, you tuned, bitch. What do you think about Glenn Night One, how he handled that? I think that he handled it very well. I was a little bit scared because I didn't see him do that on the previous seasons. Yeah. Like the fact that he had to tell us to go to bed was like, oh shit, we really are fucking up right now. Yeah. Yeah, no, it wasn't a good And it one. was scary. And uh, I thought I was going to get murdered. Glenn's like the stern father who like, he's, uh, you always know he can get mad at you, but he doesn't usually. So if he is, you, like you said, you realize you fucked up. Yeah. You fucked up. If he catches well, you. He's like, the type of, he's the type of father that would say like, I'm not mad at you. I'm just disappointed. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. He knows That's even worse. That. All right. So I don't think this is a spoiler or she'll give a spoiler away. All right. We love yachting. It's our favorite incarnation of, of this particular franchise. I mean, last season, we got a baby sea rat out of the season. We got a baby sea rat. We got rat. a baby out of this. Yeah. All right. If that is a 10, this coming season that we're about to watch, from 1 to 10, if having a baby, two sea rats mating and making a baby sea rat yeah. is a 10, what do we got in store for us this season as far as rating? Uh, well, I'm pregnant. I don't know who the father is. <laughs> <laughs> It's a fucking another 10. That's an 11 <laughs> if I've ever heard one. Gabby, uh, I have one more question. Okay, one more question. Uh, uh, because uh, we're probably going to have a lot of uh, eyeballs on us from below deck. Uh, do you watch Love is Blind, Gabby? <laughs> no, not yet. But I like listening to your podcast. I want to. Because Yeah, because like you said, we do a podcast on it at <laughs> patreon.com slash okay. another podcast Gabby, network. thank you so much for joining us from wherever you are. We forgive you. We're excited to see you. Uh, throughout the course of the season, we'll talk to you very, very soon. And when you're in L.A. next time, let us know uh, when to uh, when you want to meet up and then we'll see if you fall asleep or not. <laughs> I really no. do. I really do forgive you, Dylan. I really Dylan. Dylan, <laughs> I really love your enthusiasm. Yeah. And the like oomph in your voice right. when you talk to me. Right. I can't wait to talk to you again. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Gabby. All right. We'll see you soon. Talk soon. Thanks, guys. Bye. All right. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye. All right. So that was, that fun. was fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nick's gone. Yeah, he's gone. He's, uh, as we mentioned, he's gone to see Corey Feldman. Uh, hey, uh, uh, before we went to break to hear that interview, I was kind of making that uh, the scenario here at, on this boat is uh, it's high school. And Gary, Colin, and Daisy are, are seniors. And then some of the young uh, new staff aboard are the freshmen. And my point to this is, uh, uh, at some point, Ashley, who is apparently a freshman or a sophomore, uh, tells Tom, who's also a freshman and Gary, uh, she's open to blowing both of them okay. uh, under the, the, uh, uh right. what do you call the, the, where you watch a football uh, game on it, the bleachers, the bleachers yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Thanks for continuing with this high school theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really beautiful. The subtext is there. Uh, but uh, Gary might edge him out because he's the the senior. He's drunk and he's a womanizing alpha piece of shit. Well, yeah. So let's quickly drill down on Ashley. So she says that she usually goes for guys that are over thirty, and she says it with a very yucky drip. She has the false confidence of uh, pretty privilege. She is at the peak of her grip uh, on on one of the most valuable currencies mm -hmm. on planet Earth. You know, uh, thousands of ships have been launched for this kind of shit. She's absolutely delusional. Her reality is broken. But Tom may, you know, he may be 23, but I feel like he is a wise boy. Lord Windermere says that if Gary and Ashley have a thing, he must back away. He understands the pecking order here. Uh, not to be too animalistic about it, but it's just not smart professionally to go after the girl that your boss is, you know, interested in but he especially will get, if it's gary well he, he will get blackout drunk uh in two hours it's a good point maybe he's not a wise boy can you yank down this microphone so i can see your face i usually never get to look at you oh nice look all right that. so i got to thinking about this because i did a timeline for these sea rats 
It's the first six hours we've seen them. Mm -hmm. Now, we got 12 weeks of hole filling, okay? They are sea rats. Let's let's pump the brakes on the first six hours having to fill holes on the first night. Well, we have... Well, no holes were filled. Well, it's because Glenn intervened. Okay? That's, that's a good point. But not to get ahead of myself. Well, yeah. The, the flirting is really, really... They're laying it on pretty thick. Well, I, I, Ashley's going to ask uh, Gary to stick her, uh, his tongue down or his, his uh, smoker cough uh, tongue down her throat in minutes later. But get this. I got this idea. I yeah. got this idea. And if I'm owning one of these boats, like the Parcells or whatever it's called... Yeah. The Bill Parcells three. We know sea rats are going to suck and fuck each other. That's what <laughs> yeah, they do. Right. And many times they're doing it when we got paying customers aboard. You know what I mean? Not but many got... times. It's never happened once. But... Oh, no, they're sucking and fucking Oh, well, the they're night. aboard. Yeah, they're yeah, aboard. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. We need productivity. Here's what you do. We know what they're prone to. So we put all the sea rats in. Drugs, alcohol, sex, mud, yeah. Mostly alcohol. Right. In a hotel for two full weeks. Yeah. Uh, and we let them bang the bejeebas out of each other. Yeah. And then we let them on the boat. What was that? Uh, what did we say? Tell us what happened in, in uh, like, what was that silly town called? Uh, what was it called? It was like Viggs or something. Like there was some town they all went to. Uh, what happened in, in Viggs? Or, I, I don't remember this. I can't remember what the I, I want to help you. I don't know. What Join us on Facebook. Let us know that we got that very, very wrong. And by we, I mean me. So uh, the flirting, as I said, was very heavy. Um, she goes, what's my reward for making your bed? He says, I'll give you a high five, but it'll be one of those good ones. It'll make, make a loud slap. She says, I can think of something else that would make a, a loud slap. It's just like, whoa, oh my God, this is pretty heavy for day one. So the guests aren't getting picked up until 3 p.m. So you know what that means. Sea rats are going to suck down as much booze as they possibly can. So Ashley and Gary have a chat. She once again talks about how she likes older guys and they have a cheeky, cheeky kiss. Now, Tom is blackout and ready to step on Glenn's face <laughs> to get a good night's sleep. No, I'm kidding. He goes into the captain's room and says uh, he doesn't feel well, uh, like he's been cut in half and doesn't realize it. You know, like he's, I don't feel well. What's wrong? I don't, I don't feel well. Um, but he then begins throwing up in the bathroom and says, Captain, I'm not going to lie. I need to sleep on down low somewhere. And Glenn is saying, uh, or thinking, if there wasn't such a bountiful amount of flesh out there, I um, I would say I'm too old for this. Well, he said to himself, uh, I'm never going to let this happen again. But uh, Glenn doesn't kill men. He kills European prostitutes. <laughs> so I'm, I'm confused why he's so confident about this. Right. Let me say this. Glenn... When this is happening five feet from his fucking head, this is the guy that runs the boat who's in his 50s sharing a room with someone and Crazy. this idiot's doing this. He goes back to his iPad reading. I'm pretty sure his search, uh, if we looked at his search, it would be how to move a body. Well, it was definitely a white sheet on a crime scene cleanup. And if you are going to step on his face while he is doing important research, that is where he draws the line. Okay, that's when he's going to get out of bed and do some corrective Measures. So he marches upstairs and the Mission Impossible music plays. He shuts everything down. Now, there are, again, there are no sayings about dragging your dick through glass or shoving wires up your ass. Just stern, I'm 60. I don't need children puking on me in the middle of the night. Please go to sleep. All right, let's take a quick break to hear a word from an incredible company. It's Manscaped. Pat. How has Manscaped changed your life? Because well, before it, you were chopping your tits off. Well, that happened once when uh, I left the kit out here because we wanted people, the advertisers, to see that we actually had the product uh, available for filming. Right. So I had just a Gillette razor, and I went to shave my chest because my, my wife likes you know a little shave and stuff there. I ripped my fucking tit off, okay? That was bad, but I want to tell another tale. Yeah. I got a buddy named Brett, okay? I showed up to a birthday party a few years ago, and the man had hair coming out of his nose. Pat, you've told the story many times. Oh no, no, before. no! I have an update. Okay. I got a manscape for his birthday. We're, <laughs> our birthdays are eleven months apart. Is he back with his wife? No, he has got a girlfriend now. Her name's Ashley, and she's a fucking model. She's, he's dating a fucking model now. Now, whether Pat's Changed lying or telling the truth, that can happen to you if you go to Manscaped. Dot com. Enter in promo code below deck to get 20% off 
and free shipping. Guys, we're not kidding when we say this is one of the best grooming suites of product that we've ever seen. You go to CVS, they make you pay $38 from, for some razor. Well, then you got to wait for them to open it. Someone's you got to wait for it to open it. And they don't have... They don't have the nose trimmers. They don't have the shampoo and the body wash that smells like the gods of the forest. Go to manscaped.com. Dylan! Brett also had a funk on him. Let me tell you something, how this has transformed his life. He's a district manager for P.F. Chang's now. Okay, can you imagine that? This guy, I think he was slumming it, doing dishes in a kitchen. He started using Manscaped once I got it for him. He's got a model as a girlfriend now. And he's a district manager for P.F. Chang's. Guys, it's an incredible product. Go to manscaped.com, enter in promo code below deck to get 20% off and free True story. shipping. So the sun rises. Gary once again does this thing where he flirts with girls and he hooks up with them. And then he goes, I didn't hook up with anyone and I wasn't flirting with them either. Um, he's That's like a, the hot route that he uses every single morning after he wakes up and has done something silly. Hot route! So Ashley, after everyone is woken up, says about Tom, uh, puking is such a young person thing to do. Ashley, you're a child. Uh, you're a child with uh, with giant boobs. It's a really strange combo. You know Check what I mean? her Instagram out. <laughs> Ew. I feel gross. Uh, show research. I still feel gross. Show research. So, uh, Glenn walks into the um, the mess, and um, we kind of get a good, the bad, and the Colin kind of situation here, mm -hmm. where um, Tom and he are staring once, uh, uh, one one down. Uh, Glenn once again, perfect amount of flame, perfect amount of torching, um, makes it known that that is pretty serious what you did last night. You're not going to get fired over it, but you should be embarrassed, and you need to go clean the bathroom immediately. Love it. Love it. I think it's pretty pathetic that Tom, the second he got up and got his shit together, wouldn't clean the bathroom. That's the first thing you got to do. You're living with someone. This is your boss. He's 23 and he's blacked out. He had no, he had no recollection. <sighs> he of got he dressed did. to start walking around the boat. First yeah. thing you got to do, you got to clean his, the toilet. His main thing was getting defensive about where he had thrown up. You know, he was like, I didn't throw up on Glenn. I threw up all over his bathroom. What are you talking about? asshole don't put that evil on me so the guests arrive aboard uh parsnips um they tell marcos that he better be uh fucking ready and that gabby is the best one we get our first tour of the same boat we've had for three seasons it's very exciting sheree pointed out they got new finishes all right so snacks hit the table a, st a stunning display of cristinis with manchego and chorizo we also get caramelized scallops uh, and mango and chili amarillo or uh, aioli. We then get a ribeye with chimichurri, and this is a hell of a way to kick off the season. Uh, elegant amu amuse-bouche uh, with flavors cutting through and competing with one another, dancing on a very small stage as well, a Cristini, but setting fireworks off nonetheless. I give it 88 pots. A marvelous start yeah. to Marco's season. This is how it should be when you go on that boat. I haven't seen this level even with Rachel. Like, I guess there's like... There's a cheese know, board. There, a cheese board. Right. Like, no, 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 no. There, there was some love put into this. Absolutely. Small stage, but the flavors dance and lit off fireworks. Bam. Bam! Bam! Right. So, 88 can we get pots. To, can we get to when this fucking idiot uh, uh, enjoys trying to kill everybody? Probably not. I got to keep going. So, the sales... <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, exactly where we are. So, the sales go up. The deck crew has no clue what's going on. And then we begin to tilt. <clears throat> and you know what that means? Knives fly everywhere. And so do innocent, high-paying bodies. I want to say this. How about some seatbelts? Okay? Yeah. Because this is fucking dangerous. So dangerous. I realize Glenn is a kid in a toy store with this, but you have to weigh your passion over maiming innocent people. Yeah. The, the glasses turn into grenades when we start to tilt. So it's very dangerous. Um, Neptune is a very merciless, merciless, fickle bitch, you know? Uh, so anyways... Someone yells, I'm the king of the world. Uh, after that is yelled, uh, they are asked to do the Titanic thing. Just a note. Uh, more Ashley stuff. She can smell that Gary would be good in bed at one point, she says. Uh, Someone's father is very proud right now. So number one, holy fuck. Uh, and two, <laughs> maybe, you know, depending on how much booze he's, he's thrown down, you know, uh, he could be good, but he could be, you know, ramming an earthworm into you. You never know. So... Glenn is eating lavosh. It's like an Armenian matzah, I think, or Middle Eastern. I buy matzah. it all the time. I like it. 
Uh, the guests sit down for... Oh, it was just a very cute moment. Such a Glenn moment. Uh, the guests sit down for dinner, and that is when the first glass of wine spills and when Kelsey flosses her teeth with her hair, which is fucking crazy. <laughs> it is a known fact that one of the worst smelling things on planet Earth is freshly flossed plaque. It is... Gross. Disgusting. You have to wash your hands after you floss because you're just up in them bones in your mouth. I'm getting my teeth cleaned on Friday. Get your teeth cleaned every eight months. It's gross for people around you. All right, so let's get to dinner. First up, oyster, deliciously plated, frivolous balsamic on the rim, but, you know, whatever. Ideally, you want to put on the plate that which will contribute to the flavor of the dish, but I I, I don't want to be nitpicky. Uh, it's a classic, simple, elegant way to kick things off. Ginger and cuke mignonette. Um, and then we begin to go downhill. Oh, is that right? Big time. Next up, we get the surf and turf of appetizers. That is caprese. Uh, this one's got balsamic foam. So the caprese counter is at one on episode one, which means that we will be at about 50 of these plates of food. <laughs> Hitting the table before this, this is season. avocado toast a hundred percent and then we continue to go downhill for the main course we have one of qatar airlines in flights for business class it is filet with red wine reduction that is too thin it's roar shacking in the olive oil in a kind of dupont spill kind of way and we've also got cauliflower gratin which is, I uh, didn't say that word right, but it's something that should never be made unless specifically requested. It's gummy, and it's v- much worse than the non-broken uh, potato gratin. So they are still, still very, very hungry after many courses. And well, I'd shrimp. say they're still standing, but they're sitting down, so, and they've eaten over 10,000 calories. Listen, do, do you, boo. 60, You're on vacation. $60,000 a day. You do you. You do you. Yeah, so there are plenty more crostinis and Beep. dessert. Once again, <laughs> once again, tiramisu. Uh, we end with a chuggy, chuggy dessert. Not quite a whimper, but an uh, but anticlimactic chaos. Overall, I'd give it sixty-eight pots. Okay, way to start out the season. Well, I love his attitude too, Dylan. Right. <clears throat> uh, no, please elaborate. Oh, uh, when he was told on two separate occasions within twenty minutes that he needed to uh, prepare more food. Yeah, he said. Okay, no problem. Yeah, imagine that happening to Spaz. He'd be like, "I can't do the tilting. I, I, can you? Can you get that girl fired? I can't have her in here all the time." <laughs> Calm down, man. Just make more food. All right. So the guests depart the uh, the dinner table. One eats absolute. Uh, I mean, one eats shit so fuck so <laughs> hard, and <laughs> that is when Gabby is tasked with staying up and tending to the drunk bastard who is very very wobbly. This guy's a fucking asshole. I know we're gonna make excuses for him. Oh, he's gay. No, what? This guy. You know we're gonna make excuses. Oh, well, I thought for him. we might. <laughs> this guy is a scumbag, and I think he might be straight. Because no gay guy, the way he's talking to her, I just couldn't believe it. I felt so bad for her being put in this position because dude's like 55. It's one of those. He's drunk person says what the sober person feels. I know he's going to probably apologize the next day and it will be all washed over. And Nick said he like deleted his Instagram account and I, I guess he'll be beat up forever or whatever. Sure. But this isn't his first rodeo. I've had a lot of drunk friends living in Los Angeles for the last 20 years. Maybe I was too drunk to hear some of my friends talk this way. I've never heard someone go this. No, it's bad game because women get immediately turned off by it because it's too aggressive and it's sexual harassment. Now, you're right about the gay thing. Maybe uh, the booze and him being uh, homosexual thinks that he's, he's confused and thinks that he is allotted more rope. Like it's like the Andy Dick thing. It's like I don't care that you're gay. Oh, it's I, it's I, like can I touch your cock? Yeah, like you're being gross. Get out like, of here! You who jerk. gives a fuck? You can't do that to human beings, regardless of your sexual orientation. Now we talked to Gabby about this, um, so we don't need to cover it again, but. She's a vet. She knows how to handle uh, scumbags, scumbags like this yeah. very, very easily. And we'll see what will happen next week. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for supporting us. Uh, please, please check out our advertisers, Manscaped and Magic Mind. Uh, they help support us. So please support them. Jump in the iTunes ratings and reviews. Leave five stars, kind words. And most importantly, if you can't support the advertisers, you know, who gives a shit? Support us at <laughs> patreon.com slash another podcast network. We'll see you next week. I'm Dylan saying goodbye. Pat say goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.